welcome back to the channel. I hope y'all week is going fine. Why? Because you can't change the past, but you can change the future. Today's video, we got the Craftsman drill press. The Craftsman 150 drill press that, uh, in the last, if you watched the last video, uh, you saw I did a complete uh, how to uh, tear it down. Uh, I didn't do a uh, how to put it back together because I it's kind of self-explanatory. You know, you put it back together the same way you took it apart. So, but what I did do that you didn't see, uh, I sanded a lot of parts down. I re-oiled up, re lubed up a lot of the parts. Uh, you know what? Let me show you some of the some of the oils and uh, the uh, uh, some of the lube and stuff that I use. So basically, these were the two ones that I use most. This is just a just a regular uh, machine oil, and it allows you to get down deep in there. Uh, it's a real tight space. You got a bearing that's kind of froze up, and you don't want to just dump a lot of oil on there. These these work great uh, because it allows you just to, to just to squirt a little bit on there. You see, coming up, it allows you to get down in there and lube up, lube up the area that you're trying to lube up. So these are great for project rebuilds. And now this grease I used, this grease I use on the moving parts, like on the spindle right here, right here, all inside of here, I use this right here on the gears. And this is, this is a um, Chevron SRI grease. Uh, it's an industrial based grease and it's very good. Uh, it's very expensive too, though. I was lucky on, to be on a job site, on an industrial job site, and they had a lot of these left over, so I took a whole bunch of them. So, but this is, uh, you go to these, a lot of these big machine shops and stuff, this is the stuff that they use on their big machinery. So, one other thing too. So, as you can see, that green color, it kind of reminds you of a John Deere tractor. Uh, I did use a color that's very similar to John Deere. Let me show it to you. It's the Rust Oleum uh, John Deere Green Specialty Farm Equipment. And this paint is very thick. I mean, it takes a lot for you to scratch this off. Once you put two coats on, I put two coats on here. Once you put two coats on this, it's very hard to get a scratch on there. I mean, down to get it down to the bare metal. metal. So, uh, yeah. So, as you can see, basically on here, I didn't. I did some work, but I didn't do too much work because this is just gonna be being used in my shop, in my garage, and it's gonna be getting dirty again. So I didn't want to just make it pristine, but I did want to make it look good. So I sanded this all down with sandpaper. I sanded this down. And I put two coats of green paint on it. So let me give you a tour of it. Get up close on it. <laughs> I kind of customized this little motor right here. Put some green paint around here. <laughs> so now on this right here, I did want to keep that that rusted look just on this part right here. You know, I like I said, I didn't want to make it. Pristine. I did want to give it some of that old rustic look, you know, mixed with some new paint. So I left that that color. And you can see on the back of the motor here. You know, I left that all uh, not. Um, I didn't touch it. I didn't repaint it. I just painted this right here. I left the old craftsman craftsman badge. You can see that. Everything works. Everything works. Works really good. Let me show you down at the base. Uh oh, sorry about that. So, you know. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Let me see if I can give you a, a view of the entire thing standing up.
Yeah, I think you can see that right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> also too, what I did, <laughs> I painted my table saw too. So, <laughs> I painted that. I like that green John Deere color. I love that color. Especially for a shop. So, I'm not going to make this video too long, so this is going to be a pretty short video right here. What I did want to do, I'm, I'm going to turn it on. Now, that's one thing I still got to do. I still got to put a switch on this because right now it just operates on if you just plug it in the wall. So, I'm actually going to put a switch right here, a little toggle switch to turn it on and off. Or I'm kind of contemplating uh, having a foot operated switch. You know, when you press on the foot switch, you press on the foot pedal and it comes on, you lift the foot off, then it it turns off so I think it may be a little bit safer option uh, being as you don't want to if you get caught up on this thing you know and you you're trying to you know your hand is right here and you're trying to reach to turn it off or you know versus you got that foot pedal you just step off of it and it cuts off you know so I like having a lot of safety but um so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna turn it on so you can hear it hear how quiet it is I clean out the motor all that you, you see how quiet it is actually let me, let me get up close up on it so you can hear it. Turn it on. See, you can barely hear that motor running. Only thing I have to do, uh, I still, I'm waiting on a belt. Uh, to connect this pulley to the pulley right here. I'm waiting on the belt for that right now. Hey, I got a challenge for you all. Uh, Thank y'all for watching watching the video, you know, leaving comments, you know, I really appreciate it. But let's see if we can get this video to 20 likes. So that means that someone one, one, whoever watches this video, let's just let's click the like button. Let's or click the thumbs up button. Let's try and get it to 20, 20 likes. Uh so I'm gonna end this video right here. I just wanted to give y'all a small update on uh on uh the rebuild of this this is going to be an awesome machine you know i probably can turn around and resell this thing for five i don't want to say 500 but probably about 300 dollars. you know i probably can get 300 dollars for this you know because they don't make them like they used to you know these are in high demand you know a lot of times people they just have them sitting in their garage and they get rusted out you know and when you go to uh, put it back together or try to make it work and you got bearings that are seized up, you know stuff is not working properly You know when I first got this You see how that goes up by itself. It wouldn't it wouldn't do that Because those gears down in there, you know when it when it meshed together It was it was just caked up with dirt and lime grease, you know, and so see how smooth that is That wasn't that smooth, you know. And let me show you how easy I can adjust this base. I hear, you know, I hear a lot of people that say they have a hard time adjusting this, but let me show you how easy it is to adjust this one. I still got some wet paint down in there. Well, no, yeah, it's still wet, so. But you see how easy that slides down? So, but that just goes to show you, um, I didn't do a lot of sanding on this, but I did get a lot of that rust and stuff off of it. So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. For y'all who just watching the videos, keep watching. You know, keep learning. Let me know what you want to see. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of other great videos, building stuff, you know, fabricating in my garage. I know a lot of a lot of men out there and some women, too. You know, they like to fabricate and build things and make things. You know, I like that, too. I like working with my hands. 
you know, uh, that's what I, I get enjoyment out of doing that. So, um, I and also too, I go and look on other people's videos and I'm like, man, I like that. I want to build that. Or how can I tweak that? How can I do this? You know, so that's my passion. But um, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and like it. Go ahead and comment. We'll see y'all next time. Thank y'all for watching. Peace. You can't change the past, but you can change the future.